So in this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to install the Windows version of Fallout 4 with the latest next-gen update. And this is going to be running on the Apple Silicon Mac on Mac OS, but we're going to be using a piece of software called Crossover. And this kind of begs the question, why am I making a Fallout 4 tutorial video? Didn't this game come out nearly nine years ago? So the reason, of course, is the fact that we have a huge resurgence of interest in the actual Fallout game universe, all thanks to an absolutely excellent TV show, one of the best game to TV film adaptations that I've ever seen, and the fact that we have a Fallout 4 next gen update, which brings tons of brand new content and quality of life fixes. Not only does it work on the high end chips, it also runs very well even on my base M1 MacBook Air. That's my 13 inch completely fanless computer running a Windows game on what's basically a smartphone chip. All of the major issues have been taken care of, like all the hard crashes, the voices issue as well. And the game is running even better than it used to, all thanks to the fact that we have the option of running this to D3D Metal from Apple's own game porting toolkit. So today I'm going to show you the entire process of how to get Fallout 4 running, including installing Crossover, installing Fallout 4, and implementing all of those fixes today. So the first thing that we are going to do is download Crossover 24. So make sure to scroll down and then click on the link at the top of the description. Every single purchase that's made through this link helps to support this channel and the content that I create. So click on the link at the top of the description here, and you'll be taken to the Code Boovers website. And in this promo code box, make sure to use the code Apple Gaming Wiki New, and you'll get a huge huge 20% discount off your purchase. But if you're not quite ready to commit to a full purchase of Crossover, then make sure to go back to the homepage and then scroll down and you can make use of a fully featured 14 day free trial here. Just press the try now button and then scroll down and then enter your name and email address. And I'm gonna press the download trial now button to make use of this trial. So once you have made a purchase, then go and log into your Codeweavers account and then go to the downloads button here and then make sure to download the latest version of Crossover. So once that's finished downloading, we're gonna to go to our finder button here and then go to downloads. And then we have our Crossover double click and then it's going to go ahead and extract into downloads. We're going to drag and drop this into our applications folder here. So just drag and drop. And then within our applications folder, we're going to find crossover and then double click. And it's saying here crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Press open. So now that we have crossover installed for the first time, we're going to go ahead and click the install button here. So we're going to be installing the Steam version of Fallout 4. The Xbox Game Pass version is not going to be able to work on Apple Silicon Max through crossover. So I'm going to type in the word Steam and then we're going to click on the Steam Steam installer here. So once this is open, we're going to press the install button here. And this is basically going to automate the entire process of downloading the Windows version of Steam and then installing it within what's called a bottle on Crossover. So here it's saying that it's creating the Steam bottle. And what you're going to find are these little pop-ups that come up on screen. Just press yes to all of these font installations. And this is basically the Windows installer of Steam that we're going to go through next. Just press next here, select your language, and we can select the default location, press install. And now it's saying here, run Steam. So at this stage, what I do recommend doing is not going through this process because we actually want to finish creating the bottle first. So click on finish here. And once that's done, then the bottle will be created. And then we can make some modifications to this before we launch Steam again. Now, the next step here is that I do recommend installing what is called the Fallout 4 cross tie. So you click on this install button here and you do a search for Fallout 4. And what we're going to do here is install the Fallout 4 cross tie fixes into the Steam bottle that we just created. Created. So I'm going to go ahead and select Fallout 4 cross tie and then click on the three dots here. And then we're going to select a bottle. So we're going to select the bottle that we just created, just called Steam, and then press done. And so what's going to happen is that crossover is going to install the Fallout 4 fixes into the Steam bottle here. Press the install button here. And this is putting all of those fixes into Steam. This is also going to launch Steam for the first time as well. I'm just going to cancel this update because uh, what I want to do first is to actually click on the Steam bottle here. I'm going to change the settings before we actually launch Steam as well. So if you look at Steam here, we actually have a couple of options here, which I want to explain, which is on the right. These are the advanced options. We have the ability to run D3D Metal. So that's the DirectX 11 and 12 to Metal translation layer, which was originally bundled with Apple's game porting toolkit. So this is definitely an option that we can run the game, which I do recommend turning on. There's also an alternative way, which is running through DXVK. So this only supports DirectX 11, which Fallout 4 runs on. And you might find that in the future, D3D Metal might run better or DXVK might run better, so just be aware of that. So next, we want to be looking at M-Sync. So this is Maxima for base synchronization. It's a performance enhancement and alternative to E-Sync for Max. So I'm going to turn this one on. It's going to say here, we want to reboot bottle and enable M-Sync. So just enable this. The next thing that we want to do before we launch Steam itself is to go into Wine configuration. So I'm going to click on this now. 
And now we have this wine configuration list. We're going to make some changes here. So I'm going to here, I'm going to click on the libraries tab and we need to do some X audio overrides. It's going to fix any audio issues in the game. Basically, you want to click on this selector button here and we want to go to X audio. And there are four overrides that we need to add to this list. So I'm just going to show you how to do that now. We need this one X audio to six. So select that and click add. We need X audio two underscore seven and click add. So those two here. And these two here look like they've been added by the Fallout 4 cross tie. So this one is X3D audio one underscore six and X3D audio one underscore seven. So both of those need to be added to these overrides. So now what we're going to do is press OK. And whilst we're here, if you are having issues with audio in the game, what we're going to do is to go to spotlight search here. I'm going to type in the word MIDI and then go to MIDI audio setup. And what we need to do is to fix the sample rate of your audio device. So let's say, for example, we select the MacBook Pro speakers. Let's say you're using these. You might want to change the format from 48,000 Hertz to 96,000 Hertz. So that fixes some audio issues for some people. So now the wine configuration is done and we have D3D Metal and M Sync turned on. We're now going to launch Steam for the first time. So double click on Steam and it's going to go ahead and update and launch. So now what we need to do is to log into our Steam account. If you don't have an account already, you can just create one for free here. The easiest way for me to log in is to use my Steam app and I'm going to scan the QR code using my phone and it's going to go ahead and allow me to log in automatically. So now this is logging in, it's loading up user data and we have the Steam window popping up now. So this is not the Mac version of Steam, this is the Windows version. And what we want to do is to go ahead and get a copy of Fallout 4. So if you don't have Fallout 4 purchased already, you can go ahead and search for it. You can find it on the Steam store here. So here the Fallout 4 entry under the Steam store allows you to go ahead and make a purchase. You can add this to cart and buy it. However, if you're looking for a little bit of a discount, what you can do is click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Games Planet. And this is going to give you a Steam key, which is going to provide a 5% discount. And then within the Windows Steam client under games, we can click activate a product on Steam and then we can copy and paste that discounted Fallout 4 Steam key here and you're going to get a decent discount. If you're watching this in the future, Games Planet do excellent discounts and it might possibly be far cheaper in the future as well. So just a few days ago, this was actually 50% off. So once we have Fallout 4 purchased, what we're going to do is go to our library and then type in Fallout 4 and then we're going to go ahead and install this. So just go ahead and install it into its default location and then just let that download and complete. So now that Fallout 4 has fully downloaded, what we're going to do is to launch the game for the first time. So we're going to accept the end user license agreement. We're actually going to launch it in order to create the necessary settings files so that we can edit them and then change some of the settings, which actually causes crashes in the game. So here's just installing some dependencies. This is DirectX. Let's wait for that to finish. So now that that's installed, it's now synchronizing my cloud saves and it's now launching for the first time. So this is the Fallout 4 launcher. So this is the stage that we want to get to at the moment. It's detecting our quality settings. So it's set to ultra quality on my M3 Max chip. What we want to do at this stage is actually exit. So we don't want to do anything at the moment. The purpose of that was to create some any files, which we want to go ahead and modify now. So you want to go and access our documents folder. You can just go straight to there from Finder. You can click the go button here and then press documents here, and that'll take you to your documents folder. And then under the folder, my games, you can expand this, and then you're going to find Fallout 4 here. So just double click on this. And then this is going to contain all of the any files as well as your your cloud saves as well if they synchronize over. And the one that we want to edit here is called fallout4.ini. So you can go ahead and control click on this and then you want to hover over open with and then open with text edit. And what we want to do is to make some changes here which is going to prevent crashes and issues with the game. So the first one is going to be under general here. So it's this one here called B disable all gore equals zero. So we want to change that to one. So if you don't have this already, then you need to go ahead and type this in and it is case sensitive. So make sure to get the case correct, lowercase b, disable all gore with capital letters equals one. So we want that disabled. That's because when an enemy dies and the gore is enabled, then this actually hard crashes the game. So you want to avoid that. So next I want to do is to scroll down to controls. So find this section here. And you want to add a new entry here. And this is a mouse settings fix, because if you don't apply this fix, then the mouse cursor is going to be stuck in a little corner of your screen and it's not going to work correctly. You won't be able to turn around fully with your mouse. So you want to enter this B background mouse equals one. So that's lowercase b and then background mouse with capital letters one word and then equals one. So that'll turn on this function called B background mouse. So basically, once we're done, we're going to go ahead and save. So just click on file 
and then press the save button here and then that'll turn from edited into saved and then that's basically complete now so that's all of the fixes that we need to do with fallout 4.ini so basically everything's now working just go back to fallout 4 and then launch it again so here the launch has come up we can go to options and here's the opportunity to tweak all of the graphic settings i'm going to set this to high and then under advanced i'm going to turn off motion blur and also god rays as well because there's a pretty big performance hit press OK and then OK again and now we're ready to launch the game. Press play and we have the Fallout 4 menu here. So here we can see that the next gen update has been applied, press OK and we're basically ready to go ahead and run this game. So one issue I've noticed is that if you change weapon in the game, so for example here I switch to a different rifle, the game will stutter for a moment. So you can see the frame rate drop quite substantially from 120 to 75 FPS. However, generally speaking, Fallout 4 runs pretty damn well considering the number of translation layers at work here. We have Windows to Mac OS, DirectX 11 to Metal, and we have Intel to ARM64. And this runs far better than it used to run about three years ago. We actually have way better stability as well, especially considering that this has the latest next-gen update for Fallout 4. So here I've cramped up the resolution to 1440p at the same high settings. And basically Fallout 4 is at its most demanding during these open world firefights. Now there are stutters here or there, but it's far better than it used to run on previous versions of Crossover without D3D Metal. And it can vary pretty well between about 60 to 120 fps which is the frame rate cap for this particular screen and even when we get to the top of a large tower where the view distance is at its greatest we're still getting a very decent frame rate and just because this has the latest next gen update doesn't mean that it's immune from bugs this is a bethesda game after all there are still plenty of underlying issues with the base game that still exist on windows and with this crossover implementation we still have things like some flickering textures but i don't really think that these detract from the game experience that much. But really the issue that's plagued crossover users the most is the voices problem which has been fixed by the X audio overrides that we did earlier in the setup process. I don't expect you to understand. And not only that, the game managed to run surprisingly well even on the MacBook Air with the M1 chip with only 8GB of RAM. Here I'm playing with a paired Bluetooth controller which Crossover has automatically detected. Specifically, this is the Sony DualSense and the Xbox One controller also works well. Here we're running at 1080p at low graphics settings and we're managing to get a respectable 30 to 35 FPS, which isn't too bad for a fanless machine with only 8GB of RAM. Interestingly enough, Fallout 4 is using actually less than 5 gigabytes of memory in total, meaning it's very playable on the base M1. As this is a typical Bethesda game, you could even find a lower end any and tweak the graphics even lower for better frame rates. So anyway, this has been my guide for running the Windows version of Fallout 4 with the next gen update on the Apple Silicon Mac. If you do test this out, please make sure to let me know whether the game runs better using D3D Metal or DXVK, or if you have any other tips, then make sure to leave a comment. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.